while a third convoy of 20 trucks carrying desperately needed humanitarian aid has finally entered Gaza, but it's still just a fraction of what the UN officials say is required to meet the urgent needs of the Palestinians. Yasser Hakim has more. We uh, received uh, the news that uh, the border might be opened uh, late at night after midnight, and we came to see what uh, is the situation. We just heard uh, the news on the way that the uh, Israeli Air Force has uh, had an air raid on the area. However, it was actually an Israeli tank that hit an Egyptian military position on the Rafah border, wounding Egyptian border guards. According to official statements, Israel apologized to Egypt, saying it was a mistake, and they have opened an investigation. The border has been uh, bombarded several times in the last few days by Israeli air forces, damaging uh, the uh, crossing from the Palestinian side. This did not deter Egypt, however, from allowing 14 aid trucks to cross the border into Gaza late Sunday night. Earlier in the day, 15 trucks loaded with assistance were also delivered. All the aid into Gaza is being received by UNRWA workers before being brought to UN shelters in South Gaza as per Israeli instructions. These trucks, you see the, uh, the way it's honking, it's, it's sort of celebrating, not celebrating as much as showing solidarity with the Palestinians, that it is coming there to give them aid that they need very much. There was a feeling of excitement, especially amongst those heading into Gaza. Thank God. I'm going to deliver the aid and return. We pray for their safety and the end of this ordeal. The total number of trucks which had crossed the border from Egypt was 52 by Monday morning. However, Gaza officials say only 34 have reached the Palestinians, as the rest are still awaiting clearance from Israel. This is slowing the process for an enclave which the WHO says needs at least 100 truckloads of aid every day. Yes, Hakim for CGTN, Rafah border crossing, Egypt. Now for more on how this is uh, the Israeli-Hamas conflict may uh, be affecting the U.S. economy as well as the global economy, we're joined by Haz Despain, professor of economics at Nichols College in Massachusetts. Hans, thank you very much. I apologize if I didn't get that last name right. That was, is that correct? You, it, it correct, you. Okay. Sean, thank you. Uh, yeah. Thanks. Well, um, getting to the point here, war obviously is a known cause of economic decline, and I think we can all agree that the human suffering by far is the bigger concern here. But look, oil prices have already seen effects of this current conflict in Israel uh, and Palestine. We have to be concerned about that. What else moving forward, not only from the United States standpoint, but really from a global standpoint? Yes, yeah, it's, uh, the, we're, we've got to keep our eyes on uh, energy prices, uh, as you mentioned, st uh, stock market, exchange rates, and then also um, commodity prices, along with inflation and interest rates. And depending on how, um, if this remains isolated between Hamas and Israel, uh, those effects will probably be minor, as they've been so far. Uh -huh. But if it if it extends out to other um, Middle Eastern countries, even internal conflicts, because we see protests internally now, th then the effects on energy prices will see them go up. I want to get to the possible spreading in, in, in just a moment, but first, we've been so consumed about the possibility of a recession, not just here, but in the United States as well. What other effect could the conflict have on economies, and how might it hurt in the long run? Could this be the tipping point that possibly leads to a global recession? Oh, well, it certainly could. I, a colleague of mine, uh, Mike Nagel and myself, have writ, uh, wrote uh, that Putin entered Ukraine in part to cause a global crisis, uh, knowing there's some fractures. I believe that uh, Iran encouraged Hamas uh, to invade Israel, not because they thought they were going to win a war, but because it would cause uh, economic crisis, especially for the West. And it's those increased energy costs which then uh, hurt not only businesses, but also households with inflation and interest rates. And when that happens, stock markets go down, 
And initially, stock markets went up with this uh, mm -hmm. conflict, and now they're starting to go down. Uh, Hans, uh, you talked a bit ago about the possibility of this spreading. Let's kind of break it down. A confined war uh, or even a greater concern uh, with a proxy war than the worst full-blown conflict that involves Iran and, and other countries. In fact, Bloomberg uh, has estimated if it does explode into this full-blown war that it could raise the price of a barrel of oil by $65. I mean, that is going to be crippling to a lot of economies. That's correct. So uh, oil prices are about $90 a barrel right now. When we start, uh, you know, up towards a, a 100%, uh, pardon me, I just misspoke. Uh, uh, if, if they go up by $65, which, you know, about $150 a barrel, you're exactly right, Sean. The, the, uh, that will cause inflation. Interest rates will then have to go up to try to fight that inflation, and that's what starts slowing down the global economy, along with the decrease in spending and also a decrease in profits for business. So households won't spend and businesses won't be making profits, and th that's where you, you have all kinds of problems. And stock markets uh, don't look good, and bonds actually uh, become problematic because future bonds with high interest rates are worth more while the current bonds that we hold will be worth less. Right. And so nobody wants to be in bond markets. Mm -hmm. So it just sends the whole financial system globally into chaos. And I, I think, again, uh, Iran uh, and Russia are both uh, very well aware that this is a likely outcome of these invasions. You, know, you talked about the short-term effect that it's had already, first a little bump in the stock market, uh, but you know now obviously being dragged down. And that plays into uh, the consumer uh, feeling about this. If consumer spending indeed dips, then people are going to want to hang on to their money. They're not going to buy the goods uh, that are out there, refrigerators, what have you, cars, things of that nature. You talked about the possibility of interest rates going up, inflation going up. People start looking at their 401ks. They say, see it going down. I mean, it's, it's just a pretty ugly scenario. That's correct. And so what begins to happen is it, you, you mentioned 401ks, which is really important, Sean, because 401ks go down, but what wealthy people will do, uh, you know, let me try that again, financially sophisticated people, they'll get their money out of the stock market. It's harder to do that with a 401k, and they'll get it into commodities that will be uh, doing well, such as gold and silver and also real estate, and that creates inequality, and that inequality, wealth and, and income inequality, begins to cause political tensions within Western countries. Mm. And I think these are the real aims, the, the, the long-term aims of these, of these invasions. Uh, and I, yeah, go, sorry. Now, uh, real quickly, you, you talked about it. Is there anything that we have learned from the fighting in Ukraine and Russia right now that we could possibly brace for as consumers, as homeowners, as uh, just people concerned about the economy moving forward? Well, if you have the luxury of uh, moving your wealth, if you if you have the luxury of having wealth, for you know, first of all, um, it's probably a good idea to move it out of the stock market. In my opinion, I'm I'm not obviously giving advice, but uh, you know, just uh, offering some opinions. Um, real estate will be a little safer, but interest rates will be very very high. Yeah. So um, that that constrains middle income people or or anybody poorer than that. Uh, finding a safe place uh, to, to place their money. It, it, it has the prospects of being very grim. Hans Desplain, thank you so much. We appreciate it. Thank you very much, Sean.